Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I see such a joy in the house. Amen. I was, I was thinking to myself, Lord, is it because the fasting is ending? Exactly, it's because of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is it because the fasting is ending? I can see the smiles, the white, you know, people dressed up in white and everything else. Amen. Just lift up your hands up towards heaven and just thank the Lord for his presence. Amen. Thank him for his presence. Just let him know that we're nothing without him. Even I, as I stand here, Lord, I, I'm nothing without you. I need your grace. I need your spirit to lead me. I don't want to speak under my own wisdom, but only under the wisdom of your spirit. Give me understanding. Give me enlightenment. Open my eyes to see and to discern your will. Same prayer for you. Say, Lord, give me understanding. Give me enlightenment. The Bible says that the entrance of God's word brings light amen and our prayer today is as God's word is making entrance hallelujah into your heart God's word will begin to bring light so just declare that declare that pray God I thank you that the word is bringing light you are opening my eyes you're opening my ears I'm able right now to begin to discern your will we don't want to leave here without discerning your will for our lives, for our ministry, for our marriage, even in raising up our kids, we don't want to miss out on your will. So help us, oh God, to discern. Pour on us that spirit of discernment in the name of Jesus. God is releasing right now that spirit of discernment to be able to discern. I also sense this, good from evil. Amen. That, that gift is so important because it helps us discern the plans and the tactics of the enemy. So Father, right now, I just pray that you pour that spirit of discernment on your children. Open their eyes. Open their ears. Expand their hearts to see and to discern your will. In the name of Jesus, anything that stands, Lord, before you that we have put, Father, that will cause a hindrance from us experiencing you today. Lord, we call on your fire in the name of Jesus to consume every mountain. In Jesus' mighty name, every mountain that stands before you, we speak right now to these mountains. May they become flat to the ground so that you today can encounter. Say, I'm encountering the Lord. Oh, come on, I can't hear you. Say, I'm encountering the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I love the word of Job. He said, I've heard about you, but now I have seen. I have seen. I have seen. Father, may this be us today. Move us from a place of just hearing about you to a place of seeing you and encountering you. Encounter your spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace being released over us. We know that we are nothing without your grace. We are nothing without your grace. Minister to us today in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say a big amen. amen. Clap for Jesus. You may take your seats. I can see many of you are cold today. Some of you have lost some weight because of the fasting. And I know just when you start losing some weight, I know ladies are happy because this season of 21 days, some one kilo came off, two kilos came off. Amen. But I know after the fasting is over, you will start eating again and the weight will come back. But receive grace to lose weight. <laughs> Ladies, can I have the ladies' hands up? Receive grace. Not only ladies, come on, men. We, we want that grace, amen, to lose some weight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Open to John chapter 7. How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord? There is no better place, no better place to be than to be in the house of the Lord. David said, I would rather be, I would be a day in the house of the Lord than anywhere else, right? We thank God for his presence. John chapter 7 verse 37 to 38. And I've titled my sermon, Let the Anointing Flow. Amen. Let the anointing flow. Say the anointing is flowing. You know, I've ministered many times on the anointing. Even when the Lord 
you know, I was praying over the week and the Lord just, actually I was exercising when that, when that sermon dropped into my spirit. And the Lord said to me, I want you to minister this word to the church. Letting the anointing flow. I said to the Lord, Lord, I've ministered this many times. Not let the anointing flow, but I've ministered on the anointing. How many of you remember times, countless times, I've done sermon series on the anointing, on the Holy Spirit. I've preached countless times on the, on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But you know, the Lord just said, the, the church needs to hear this again. Let the anointing flow. And you know what the Lord showed me, and I want to share this with you. The Lord showed me that He has anointed us every one of us here in the body of Christ, every believer who has, and I would use scripture to back this up, that every believer here, if you have made Jesus your Lord and your Savior, amen, His Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, now dwells on the inside of you. Let's use scripture to back this up, amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19, it says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is where? Who is in you. Say he is in me. Say he is in me. Of the Holy Spirit who is in you. Whom you have from God. And you are not your what? Your own. You were purchased. Amen. When Jesus put his spirit on the inside of you. You no more belong to yourself. I now belong to who? To Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't it exciting that now I belong to God? First I was in the world. First I belonged to who? To the enemy. I belonged to the devil. I was living in this dark world, living like the world. But now Jesus paid the price. He sacrificed himself. He put, and when we believe in the, in the, in the work of the cross, Jesus said he will put his spirit on the inside of us us so that we no more belong to the world but now the Holy Spirit is a deposit in us to guarantee what is to come but this Holy Spirit gives us hope amen gives us assurance amen gives us enlightenment opens our eyes and our ears the spirit of truth so that we may know more of God amen the more we walk with the Holy Spirit the more we walk with the Holy Spirit, the more we will know more of Christ. Because the Bible is clear, Jesus said that the truth, amen, will set you free. When we receive the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, we will come to know more of God's truth. And the more we know of God's truth, the more we will walk in freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. We have the Holy Spirit. You have the anointing because the Bible says your body is what the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you first John chapter 2 verse 27 it says but the anointing which you have received from him it abides where inside of me the Holy Spirit is not in my shoes is not the Holy Spirit is where is in me he dwells in me so I'm anointed by God not because of my looks, not because of what I wear, but because of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of me. I'm anointed. Amen. I carry God's power. God put His power on the inside of me when I chose to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. He said to me, take my spirit. Take my power. Amen. So now we can walk and manifest the power of God through how? through the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. The more I surrender my life to the Holy Spirit, the more I, I live a life surrendered and in line with the Word of God and to the voice of God, the more I will see the Holy Spirit activated in my life, the more I will see the manifestation of God's power in my life. Amen. The Bible says, but the anointing which you have received from you abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And it's true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Amen. We are anointed by the Holy Spirit. 
we're anointed by God we're anointed by his power because of the presence of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us amen we want to do the work of God but how can we go, how can we do the work of God God is supernatural right and if we want to walk in the realm of the supernatural then we need the power of the Holy Spirit and that is why it is so important for us to walk in that anointing what does the word anoint means it means to rub it means to smear on so literally when I say I'm anointed it means I'm rubbed all over I'm smeared all over by what by the Holy Spirit amen the world around us wants to see the demonstration of God's power and for us to be able to demonstrate that power we need to be able to tap into that reservoir, reservoir, reservoir of power that is in the presence of the Holy Spirit, which we call the anointing, the power of God. Are you with me? Are you with me? You want to heal the sick? You cannot do it with your natural power. Amen. You need the anointing and the power of God so that when you lay your hand on the sick, it's the power of God that is driven from the inside of you to touch those who are sick amen in the ministry of deliverance amen when we minister deliverance no matter the strength or the power of the demon that is coming against you amen he has to surrender to the power and the anointing of the holy spirit so when you are praying when you lay your hand on someone who is sick or someone who is demonized it's the anointing and the power of God because the Bible says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. When you lay your hand on the sick, when you lay your hand on someone who is demonized, it's the anointing that breaks that yoke. Nothing else. Amen. The people around you can be set free only by the anointing. The power of the Holy Spirit are at work in your heart. So I believe I've established this fact that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That the anointing which you have received abides in you. Romans chapter 8 verse 11, it says, and Christ is in you. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells where? In you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you will give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you is this fact established today where does the anointing dwell inside of me amen i'm his temple i'm the temple of the holy spirit this anointing dwells where in me it abides in me it says forever when i surrender my life to Christ that anointing came in we have received that anointing amen but now we need to enter into this season and this is I believe what the Lord really put on my heart to begin to encourage you to move from that place where you are just sitting to begin to move out of your comfort zone and get out of your seat so that people can begin to encounter the anointing that God has put on the inside of you are you with me can I have an amen can I have a hallelujah I believe God is tired of looking at the body of Christ sitting on the anointing praying for more anointing how many of you always pray for more anointing? God fill my cup up give me fresh anointing I need more of your anointing furthermore give me more God gives us more but what do we do we sit on that anointing many of you I look at you you are like a bottle full of water amen but your lid is what is closed but as we are entering into a season where the body of Christ is a season you know the world is getting darker it's time to take that lid off so that that anointing that God has put on the inside of you you know God puts you in places to work dark areas to work you may not be happy where you are working but God is expecting that that anointing that he has put on the inside of you 
You will use it to bring deliverance and set the captives free in the dark places. Some of you are unhappy in your workplaces. Some of you are fighting, fighting with people in your workplaces. When you should be fighting with what? With the enemy. Amen. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We need to understand what we are fighting. You need to understand the battles that you are fighting. The torment that you, that's going on in your mind. Amen. The confusion that's going on around you. It's because you are not fighting as flesh. You are fighting a spirit. But to be able to overcome, to be able to rise above these battles, amen. The Bible expects us to soar, amen. God's children are to soar. But today we walk around defeated. Why? I believe it's because we have not acknowledged what resides on the inside of us. The authority and the power that God what has given us tell me if you come to this place where you understand the power that is on the inside of you will you be afraid no God is greater he's greater than any demon that is coming against you he's greater than any spirit that is coming against you he's greater than any storm that is coming against you maybe you say pastor it's easier said than done I understand I've been in storms where my head is down constantly throughout the storm. And I wonder to myself, God, when are you going to bring me out? But I've come to discover that my God is greater than any storm that I face. And I've come to discover that my victory is in my dependency on Him. Amen. The more I learn to depend on Him, the more I experience victory. The less I depend on Him, the less victory I will experience in my life. And that is to you, to the youth. Many of you are growing up. You're growing up fast. Amen. The challenges of life are coming against you so fast. So fast. But let me tell you, what will anchor you in this life is that you get yourself rooted in Christ. In Christ. We need to get to that place where we say, Lord, I'm nothing without you. You remember what Paul says? For to me to live is what? Is to, is, is, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Literally, he was saying, if I die, I will be happy because I will be with Christ. But if I live on this earth, even better because I am with Christ. Youth, our youth, young adults, Sunday school, all of you, this should be what should inspire you this should be what should keep you motivated and moving amen hallelujah we need the anointing and the power of god operating in our life it's not enough church that we are anointed and this is where i want to start it's not enough that we are anointed there is no point in you having god's power you having God's Holy Spirit, but yet you don't go out and manifest His power and His glory. Amen. The anointing you have received is not for only you to walk in victory. You will be selfish if you sit on that anointing so that you can walk in victory. Amen. That anointing, God put that in you. That grace was put in you so that People around you will see the glory of God. Amen. Lucy, Prophetess Lucy read this scripture. And I will read it again. Because I believe not only does God anointing abides in us, His Spirit abides in us. But I also believe that the anointing has a purpose. It has a mandate. Amen. And until that anointing is released out of us, that mandate will never be fulfilled. Are you with me? You have received the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a mandate for you. There is a purpose for you. Amen. It was not put on the inside of you so that you would look good. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a purpose for the anointing. God saved you. It's great. I'm saved. I'm born again. I will go to heaven, but that's not enough, church. 
We need to get out of our comfort zones. And even as children of God, the more we stay comfortable, the more the world around us is what? Is perishing. Are you with me? People are going to hell in the minute. Not in the hour, not in the days. In the minute, people are going to hell. Why? Because God's children are comfortable. We're sitting on God's anointing. We're sitting on God's gifts. When many of you here in the body of Christ, there are prophets here, there are pastors here, there are evangelists here. Amen. Whom God is saying, I have anointed you. Get up out of this chair. Get out and let your light shine. Let people see my glory through you. The more you sit, the more we delay and prevent people or share the gospel to those around us. The anointing has a purpose. Luke chapter 4 verse 18, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me. Jesus needed the anointing. Amen. To fulfill God's plan and God's purpose. Jesus came to this earth because He had a mandate. And he was literally saying, I needed that Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. I needed the anointing to fulfill God's mandate and God's purpose. And the same goes to us. If we want to fulfill his mandate and his plan and purpose for our lives, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing. It says, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. To do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Hallelujah. There is a mandate he said to preach the gospel to the poor. Many of you are called to preach the gospel to the poor. He said, sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Many of you, God has anointed you with healing power, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it says to proclaim liberty to the captives. How many of you know that the outside world is in darkness? They are in captivity. They're in bondage. Amen. And God is calling you and me to get up, to arise, step out, and release that anointing. Release that anointing. Because until this anointing is released, the poor will not hear of the gospel. Maybe you say, let the poor go to hell. Amen. Sometimes God... You hate someone so much, God will say to you, go and minister to them. You say, God, this one, he deserves hell. Let him go to hell. Am I right? No one deserves to go to hell. Not even those who are opposing you. Not even those who are persecuting you. That's why Jesus said we should pray for our enemies. Amen. No one deserves to go to hell. So you have an anointing on the inside of you. And like I said, many of you, God has called to preach to the prisons, to the poor, to set the captives free, to bring sight to the blind, and to set liberty those who are oppressed. Okay? But I want to ask you, if we keep sitting down, if we never step out, and I'm not saying step out as in, it's good to go out and evangelize, but literally stepping out, just come out of your comfort zone and begin to speak about Christ. That's what I mean. I'm not saying go and do an evangelism course and a doctorate degree in, in Bible school before you can begin to start ministering the gospel. No, with what you have, the little that God has put on the inside of you. Maybe you're a new believer. You don't have to know all the scripture before you go out and begin to minister or to preach or reach out to someone or to lay your hand on someone who is sick. The moment you receive the Holy Spirit, though you don't yet know all of the Holy Scriptures, yet God has anointed you. And with what you have, 
God is able to bring deliverance. Are you with me? Come on, clap for Jesus. We're always afraid to clap for the Lord. Amen. But if a breakthrough happens, pa, 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 Lord, thank you, thank you. I bless you. Amen. We should clap no matter what. Amen. Always be in that place, Lord. We, we want to honor you no matter what. Amen. It's there, church. It's there. But we need that wake up call. And that is why I believe today God is going to use me in that manner to encourage you to step out. Step out. Stop sitting in your comfortable zone. If you want to, to serve the Lord, you would have to become uncomfortable. Are you with me? I've seen people miss out on their destiny and I'm speaking about friends. They refuse to serve. They refuse to be used by God. And for that reason, literally, they accomplish nothing for the Lord. Yes, they do their devotional and they are encouraged in the morning when they read their 10 minutes devotional and for the whole day they can depend on that devotional. Right? But we need to get out from that comfortable zone where we read our devotional with a little bit of worship and the whole day we're, you know, doing our own thing and we forget about everyone around us. And you pray, God, anoint me more. Pour more anointing, fresh anointing. Oh, rabababashin, de 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 de. Father, more anointing. And God is saying, I've anointed you. Just go. Just go. Just go. Look to someone next to you and say to them, it's the season to go. It's the season to go. The power of the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. It's the season to step out of your comfort zone. Get out. And let your light shine. Amen. Let's go to scripture. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. Here is when the Lord was saying to the disciples, Wait on the Holy Spirit. I want you to go. But let me clothe you with the Spirit before you step out and do what I'm calling you to do. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. It says, Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry literally means but wait amen but tarry or wait in the city of Jerusalem until you have en 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 endued with power from on high amen Jesus was saying I have a plan for you but don't be in a hurry to go amen I want you to wait I want you to tarry a bit don't get impatient. Be clothed with power before you step out. And listen to Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And the book of Acts is a continuation of the book of Luke. Okay? So the book of Acts was written by Luke, the apostle or the disciple Luke. Here again, Jesus just reminding them basically of Luke chapter 24, verse 49. It says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart, to wait. For, wait, not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. So the disciples waited. And Jesus goes on to say to them, when you wait, what is going to happen? He says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, but you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit, he says to them, wait for the Holy Spirit so that I clothe you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. But now he's saying, when you receive this cloth, this person of the Holy Spirit, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you shall be witnesses to be to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So the, the disciples, they didn't rush. They waited. Jesus said they should wait. They waited. So they set a time in the upper room. They were praying and seeking the face of God. Acts chapter 2 verse 4. It says, and when, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
wait Matthew chapter let's go to Matthew chapter 8 28 verse 19 it says Jesus said to them go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Jesus was saying to them in Matthew chapter 28 I want you to go but before you go wait for me for for me to clothe you with power so what did the disciples do they waited when they received power did they keep waiting The first instruction was, I want you to go. Amen. I want you to go. This is the great commission. I want you to go into the world and preach the gospel. To be my witnesses. Baptizing the people in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. But before you go, I want you to wait for the Holy Spirit. That you would receive power from the Holy Spirit. But when you have received this power... From the Holy Spirit, when you have received this anointing, am I to keep waiting? Then why are you waiting? Why are you still praying for more anointing? Why? Why? We're still praying for more anointing. Listen, I'm more convicted with this sermon more than you. I don't know if you are receiving any conviction, but I, I am. I am. We need to rise up. We need to step out of this comfort zone. Scripture. Let's go to Scripture. Luke chapter 11, verse 33. It says, No one lights a lamp and puts it in a place where it will be hidden or under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. So that those, so that those what? Who come in may see the light but today where are we we're under the table you have the light it's not that you don't have the light you have the anointing you carry the holy spirit on the inside of you don't get me wrong god has anointed you but where is your position your position is not on the table so that those who come in will see the light no you are where under the table in your comfort zone but it's the season for Isaiah 60 verse 1 it says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises it rises upon you it says arise hallelujah hallelujah arise arise come on let's take like the chair we're sitting on is our comfort zone amen and the Lord is speaking to you now and the word is touching you now what should we do let's stand up stand up out of your chairs stand up out of your chairs come on you look at how you guys are standing amen I saw some of you do this come on amen we want to jump out of our chairs jump out of our comfort zone where are the soldiers of Christ where are the generals of Christ we keep speaking about what the apostles did what the prophets did what Elijah did the double portion of Elijah and Elisha where is the double portion of Pastor Jinan the double portion of Pastor Anthony the double portion of Jamil and and David and every one of us where why are the people not speaking about the double portion that is on your life why we keep speaking about how peter walked on water how this disciple did this but nobody is speaking about us amen you look at the the generals of god today you can count them on your on your fingers just a few of them you can take your seat just a few of them amen why because we have chosen to just sit but isaiah is saying arise and shine he's literally saying it's time to step up and step out some of you you have stood up today and I pray that this is really a prophetic picture of what you will be doing am I am I clear it's a prophetic picture of what you will be doing and it's not just something that you have done in the physical because pastor asked me to do it amen 
God has given you the anointing to be with, to be what? To be witness, to witness to those around you, to share the gospel to the poor. We have many avenues here in the church for you to stand and, and to minister. I know not everyone is called to the pulpit, but maybe you're called to the prisons. We have a prison ministry. Maybe you're called to the poor. Maybe you have a, a call for Sunday school. But until you step out and say, Lord, today I'm going to take that step and go and do what you have called me to do, until we step out, the anointing will never flow. I can be anointed with all the anointing that the Holy Spirit can give me. I may love, many of you love God. You surrender your life to God. You pray. You fast. Everything that is needed in activating and seeing the power of God money in our lives. You love God. It's not that you don't love God. But there is this one, I don't know if I should say equation or just this one thing. And I believe you may be humble, praying, worshiping, a worshiper, but there is this one thing. And I believe all of, all, all of the, the rest are like bottled up in this one thing. The word go. The word go. You are humble. Yes, God loves the humble. I worship God. I, I pray and I, and I fast. I live, I live a holy life before the Lord. I'm, I'm obeying the word. I have the faith. I believe. But God is calling me to step out and go. Because all of this, we will see that manifestation of God's power when we say, God, I'm going out. I'm stepping out. And I'm not saying, like I said, not everyone is called to the pulpit. But I don't know what God has called you to be. And I said, many of you, there are many prophets here. There are many teachers here evangelists sitting among us generals of God but maybe you're sitting and waiting well I pray pastor Gabby identifies me or sees me sees my gift no stop sitting on the anointing stop sitting on the gift the gifts are not for you yes there are some gifts like the gifts of speaking in tongues which is to edify yourself, to strengthen yourself. But you look at all the rest of the gifts. It's for what? It's for building the body of Christ. The, more, the longer we sit, the more we deprive the body from what? From growing. The more I sit on this anointing, the more I deprive God's, the body of Christ. It's not the building. It's not the walls. It's wonderful to have the walls and the buildings and uh, the shed from the rain but the body of Christ is you and me this is the body of Christ if you have the Holy Spirit in you you have joined the body of Christ with Christ as what the head Jesus is the head and we receive the anointing of Christ through his Holy Spirit and that is why Paul said that I may know the power of your resurrection Paul just had Maybe a little revelation and he knew there was more. So he said, Lord, that I may know that power that raised you from the dead. I want to know it and discover it. But the scripture says that power lives and dwells. It abides in you and in me. But Paul is saying, Lord, I want to know more of this power that is on the inside of me. I don't just want this power to be on the inside. I want to know more. I want to manifest that power more. It's your season to go. It's your season to step out. It's your season to step out and step out. And stop being comfortable. I'm comfortable at my workplace. I'm comfortable with my church. I'm comfortable in my marriage. I'm comfortable with my friends. Amen. We're always comfortable. Some of you, your friends don't even know that you are a Christian. And these are friends that you've been with for maybe 10, 15 years. They don't even know that you are a Christian. Because you've never had or you've never taken that opportunity to speak about Christ. I had a, I had a meeting with, and this story just dropped into my spirit. This, I would say a, a man of high position. 
Amen. And I was having some challenges, so I was sitting with him so that we could speak about some of these challenges that, that I was going through. Many of you know that I have an issue with some property which we've been battling with back and forth, and we went, we've been going back and forth. But because I know for sure, I heard from the Lord when I bought this property six, seven years ago, no matter the challenges that I'm encountering, I'm still holding and depending on God because I know what I heard. Amen. And maybe this is an encouragement to somebody who, who heard something from God, stepped out, but at the moment you're experiencing some challenges, some, you know, some storms and you're beginning to doubt, Lord, is this really you? Could this be you? Amen. But I want to assure you, if truly it was the Spirit of God that spoke to you, keep standing strong no matter the storm that you're going through. Because I bought this property, we started going through challenges, challenge after challenge, even to this day. We're still fighting the gates of hell. Amen. We're still fighting. But I was in this, in this meeting. And this guy had read my file, really discovered how long I had waited and why I have been waiting. So with this meeting with these people and this man in government and some other officials, and he said to me, that was why, what he started with. He said, I want to ask you this question. What has kept you waiting when I he said when I look at your investment when I look at the value of the land or the property compared to what you are going through amen compared to the challenges compared to the struggles compared to all the, the things that you are going through the insult the persecution everything that you are going through is it worth it is it then he said to me I want to understand what has kept you fighting for this land and this guy knows nothing about me being a follower of Christ a pastor he doesn't know anything I said to him and I would say to you the way I said it to him I said to him honorable you know in Ghana person in high position we always we want to honor what honor is you so I said honorable do you want to know why I've been pursuing this land for six seven years I've been fighting this then I narrated the whole story with him. And I said to him how I was driving. And the Lord said to me, look to your left. Then when I was speaking in that manner, he started opening his eyes. Because I started saying, then the Lord spoke to me. The Lord said, look to your left. I will give you this land to possess. And I said to him, I went home after three hours because I had put some agents and I was looking for a land to buy. I said three hours. It had taken me two years looking for land and I could just not find the land that I wanted. But on that day when I was driving, I looked to my left and the Lord spoke to me. I got home after sleeping for about three, four hours because my brother-in-law had just passed away. Someone called me. I picked up the phone. It was an agent. He said, I have a land for you. I said, where is the land? He said, it's on that road. I went and I saw the land. It was the exact place that the Lord had said to me. And you know, when I was speaking about the Lord and glorifying God at that moment, you know, when you're meeting with someone of high position, there's always like an anxiety. There is like a fear, like that thing in the stomach. It's, you're not sure if it's, if it's anxiety, it is hunger, it is gas, you don't know, you know. It's just something is there. You know, you just shake your leg a bit. But you know, when I started speaking about the Lord, I just sensed the anointing and the power of God. It's like fire came over my head. All of a sudden, my leg that was shaking, I put it down. I said, ah, you know, God, now you begin to speak. I just started speaking and as I was glorifying God and sharing this testimony about what God has done in my life, I'm telling you the anointing, I was sharing this with my wife, I said it was like a church service. The anointing of God just filled the room. And this man just stood up. He said, who am I? Who am I to fight the God that you serve? If you are telling me that God said this to you, if God is saying, this is for you. Who am I to stand against this that God has promised you? Who am I? I may be big in government of a high position, but I'm nothing before God. He's also a believer. I'm nothing before God. So who am I to stand against this project? Who am I? Amen. 
And this is what the anointing does. It's able to open the way. Where places are closed, where the moment you begin to speak about Christ, people may be blind in their spirit. Huh? They may be blind in their spirit, in bondage. But the moment we begin to speak about Christ, the moment we say, can I pray for you? The moment you lay your hand on them, you will see the manifestation of the glory of God over your life. You will see it. You will see the manifestation. And here in this church, there are avenues for you to serve, for you to allow that anointing to flow out of you. You look at Nellie, Minister Grace. When she stands here and she ministers, amen. It's not only the voice. When you see people going down and worshiping God, it's not because she has a, she has a wonderful voice. But there is something... You know the, word, the best definition I love for the, the word anointing, anoint more than the word smear or, or rub over, is to be set apart. To be set apart. When God anoints something, He sets it apart for His use. Remember in the Old Testament when the prophet would anoint the king? The king will be set apart to be used by God. Amen. So you have been anointed, you have been what? You have been set apart to be used by God. So when Nelly chooses to go, she chooses to be a worship leader. She chooses to, to serve God. When she stands here and we are worshiping and going down on our knees and, you know, it's not, she has a wonder, but it goes beyond the voice. You know why? Because God's hand, when God sets something apart, He anoints something and He sets it apart for His use. It means God's hand is on it. That is why we pray for the instruments. God anoint the instruments. Anoint the drummer. Anoint everything. You remember in the Old Testament, everything in the what? In the tabernacle had to be anointed for, to be used by God. To be used by the priests. Sorry, to be used by the priests. Or, yeah, they had to be anointed. But when they receive the anointing, that means God's hand is now on it. On it and it can be used by, by God. And the same goes to you. When you step out and say, God, use me, that anointing will begin to flow. Amen. And you've heard me say many times, church, and I will try and end with this. You've heard me say many times that there is a difference between just singing and singing with the anointing. You've heard me say there's a difference between worshiping, worshiping, praising God with the anointing, or even ministering God's word. There are many preachers who are charismatic. Amen. They have such a great way of preaching, but there is no anointing. And you don't have to go, don't think I'm preaching this because if you're seeking to go to Bible school, go to Bible school. I'm using myself as an example, not to boast or to, to come against, you know, anyone going to Bible school. You want to go to Bible school to learn more about the word, you know, to go. But you know, going to Bible school does not make you anointed. I just want to, amen. Going to Bible school does not, I've never been to Bible school, honestly. Prophetess Lucy, have you been to Bible school? You haven't. Pastor Anthony, Pastor Isaac, small. Pastor Jinan, we've never been to Bible school, amen. But we trust in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When we stand here to preach the word of God, we lean on the power of God. Lord, let my voice be anointed. Let the words that I say and I speak from my heart be anointed so that those around me will encounter your power. If I stand here and I preach beautiful words, read things and make you laugh, but if there is no anointing, there will be no change. There will be no change. There will be no transformation. I don't know why I keep uh, Pastor Anthony and Prophetess Lucy to use you as an example because this keeps dropping into my heart. I remember when, when they, joined, they joined the church, I believe about three years ago, four years ago, you know, it was just during I seeing them and just encouraging them to be part of church. And I remember seeing them outside and I said, you know, Anthony, then you were Anthony, Lucy. I said, to, even now you're still Anthony and Lucy. And when I said to them, you know, I want to encourage you to join us at live group. You remember? Four years ago. And they joined us to, they joined us to, to live group. And then I just started just listening to them. 
hearing Pastor Anthony, Prophetess Lucy, Pastor Anthony would share something from his heart. Prophetess Lucy would pray. Then I said, no, there is something. I can see the anointing. You can, you can sense the power of God at work in the life of someone. I don't know, I have this gift where I'm able to pick and see the, the gift in someone. And I've been able to identify, I would say this by the grace of God, identify many gifts in people that they did not even know. And this is not to say they did not know their gift. But at that moment, I believe the voice of God just started like sounding in my ears. That there is just, God started showing me that Anthony was a teacher and, and prophetess Lucy was a, was a prophet of God. And this was just in the beginning of them just sharing, opening their mouth and just praying, opportunity to come and to pray. Then I remember one time when we, 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 had, we had an altar call and I was walking around and, and ministering the power of God and, and I just looked, looked towards their direction and again the Lord confirmed to me their, really their giftings. So I said, Lord, I'm going to approach them. I'm going to begin to encourage them so that they begin to step out and begin to, you know, walk, to begin to go. Step out in their calling. Step out in their gift. So that the anointing and the gifts. You know, the Bible says that out of your bellies, what? Will flow rivers. Out of your bellies will flow rivers. Many of you are full of rivers, but they are not flowing. Your river is stagnant. Your river is not moving. It's there, but God wants that river to flow. So I spoke to them, encouraged them, and I saw that gift uh, uh, on them. Amen. And I remember approaching, approaching them, and I said to them, listen, I want you to begin to take place, uh, find a place in the ministry. And uh, past, uh, Anthony, I spoke to Anthony, and I spoke, I remember more uh, Prophetess Lucy. I said to her, because I, I could see that she has that gift of prayer. She has that gift, prophetic gift. I said to the Lord said to me, you know, put her in a place of prayer. So I said to her, listen, we, we, want us, we, we were then praying, but we wanted to do something else with the prayer meeting. I said, listen, God is moving us into another place when it comes to prayer. I want to ask you, would you be okay to be the one that leads the prayer? And I remember, you can ask her, hey, look, she was afraid. And she always shares and, and testifies of the first time I asked her to, 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 to minister from the pulpit. I mean, she was shaking. She said she even had to take off her high heels because of the way she was. You know, you can't walk when you're really shaking with high heels. So she was afraid, but she took that step. Amen. And many of you are afraid. You're afraid to step out. You're afraid to go. But you need to take that step. I encouraged her. Maybe I'm not the best person at motivating but in the best way I know how I said to her listen I know you have that call over your life I know you carry that anointing but you need to step and you can ask them I always say to my ministry leaders I said to them you want more anointing then step out because the more you give the more you will receive this is for you write it down if no one has said this to you the more you give out the more you will receive so if you just sit and sit, there will be a point where God will say, my friend, you are full, just stay full. But it's time to step out. So I encouraged her, she stepped out. I encouraged Pastor Anthony, I remember saying to Pastor Anthony, I want you to minister. I mean, he started ministering at Life Group for about two or three years. And I just saw how the gift of God was just being groomed and, and, and you know, built up on the inside of them. From Life Group, from prayer meeting. I said to Pastor Anthony, uh, I, I now want you to begin to minister from the pulpit. And I started seeing him ministering in other small groups like Kingdom Men and, and other uh, programs we have. And I would ask him to minister and to teach the word. And I would just stand and I'm like, okay, God, truly you are confirming your word. Same with, with Prophetess Lucy. I started seeing. And then I just, you just started seeing the anointing, the power of God being released out of them as they chose to step out and be used by God and this is it amen and I remember even asking Pastor Anthony to preach from the pulpit amen and prophet is Lucy you remember in the in the office when I said to you I said to you I sense the Lord now wants you to move from from the you see how pastor you know Lucy she's 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 very charismatic right but there's also a part of her she's shy this we know the part of her 
So I told her in the office, I said to her, listen, I feel it's the season where now it's time to step up from the prayer meeting to, I believe the Lord wants you to start mounting the pulpit and ministering. You know what she said to me? She said, Pastor, are you sure you heard from God? Amen. Are you sure? And Anthony, you remember we were just laughing. She said, I don't, this one, I don't think you have heard from God. You should go and pray again. I said, Lucy, I know what I've heard from God. God, this is a new level. God wants you to step into, begin to minister His Word. Because I know you carry the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. But they stepped out. You may be afraid. Step out. Amen. No matter where you find yourself, step out. And how many of you have seen the anointing and God's Spirit manifested through this couple? How many? Amen. You see the power of God manifesting through them when they stand here to, and allow the Lord to use them. His power is manifested through, through them. And God is looking for anyone, any vessel. You know you are like a gun. I will end with this example. God, stop giving me examples. You are like a gun in the hand of God. God wants to pull the trigger so that His anointing and power will go set the captives, you know. But you are on the rest. You know how you put the gun on the rest? And no matter how much you press, there is no way that, and that is where many of you are. You are in that rest position. And God is, but I believe it's the season. Let's be up on our feet. It's the season to disengage. It's the season to disengage from that rest position. To disengage from that rest position and allow that anointing to flow out of you. Luke chapter 12 verse 35, it says, Be dressed and ready for service and keep your lamps burning. How many of you remember the story from Matthew chapter 25? About the foolish virgins and the, the wise virgins. Amen. The, the virgins represent, I would say, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not ignorant about that scripture. I know the Lord was speaking about the end times. But how can we relate to this scripture now? Amen. The virgins represent us, the church. Right? The ten virgins. Let's say the word virgin literally means purity, sanctification. We're sanctified, we're purified with the Holy Spirit. So ten believers, sanctified, purified by the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says five of them were wise. Five believers were wise and five of them were very foolish. You know the difference? Was that the wise ones had a lot of oil, a lot of anointing. But the foolish ones, they came with no and zero anointing. But the Bible tells us, and this is where that scripture caught my heart. It says, when the bridegroom was a little bit late, both the wise who had a lot of oil and the foolish ones, they slept. They slept. They slept. Amen. And this is us today. We have a lot of oil. We have a lot of anointing. God has anointed us, but we're sleeping. We're sleeping. We're sleeping. We're sleeping. So today we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Spirit of the Lord to wake us up. Lord, wake us up. Wake us up from our slumber. Wake us up from our laziness. When it comes to every other thing, we're, we're awake. When it comes to barbecue, beach, party, you know, every other thing, we are awake. But tell the church to fast. Tell the church to pray. Oh, pastor, I didn't hear that you had announced the prayer. But when I announced the barbecue one month ago, five months ago, you heard it. But when it comes to prayer and fasting, there is just something. Your ears are always blocked. You know, the enemy is afraid of a believer not because he's anointed but the one who allows the anointing to flow as long as you are anointed he's not afraid but when you allow that anointing to flow when you say i'm going to stand up and stand out and begin to allow that anointing to flow that's when he's threatened that's when he's afraid so raise up your hands and just pray pray in the spirit wake us up oh lord Wake us up from our slumber, from our laziness, that spirit of slumber.
many of you, you come to church and it's in church that you find a place to sleep when the word is being preached, when the word of light is being preached, when the word that is power is being preached. You have all of the week to, pre to sleep, but when you come to church, you choose to sleep. Tell me that is not the work of the enemy over your life. Come out of that place of slumber. Come out of that place of laziness. Let that word from Isaiah 61 shine in our hearts. If anything you've received today, receive these two words. It's my season to arise and to shine. It's my season to step out of, from being under the table to being on top of the table so that when people come into contact with me, they will see the glory of God. It's my season to do and obey what God is calling me to do. Wake us up, O oh Lord. Pour that spirit over us and wake us up from our slumber. Wake us up in the name of Jesus. That spirit that constantly torments us, makes us sleep, makes us lazy, makes us. May you be delivered right now. May you be delivered right now. May the spirit and the anointing of the Holy Ghost deliver you right now from that spirit of slumber, that spirit of laziness. You know laziness is a sin? You know slumber is a sin? You go read the scripture. Get out of your laziness and begin to serve the Lord. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, as I stretch out my hand towards your children, I release a fresh grace over them. Those of you sitting upstairs, young ones upstairs, media team, just stand up. Receive that grace in the name of the Lord Jesus right now. Let that grace touch you and wake you up and wake you up in the name of Jesus. Wake up now in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May that spirit come upon you strong and cause you to move in another, in another dimension of God's grace. May that Spirit of God come over you now and create on the inside of you a new boldness. Receive that grace to be bold. Receive that grace, those of you joining us, to be bold. Witnesses of Christ. When the disciples received that anointing, we see Peter standing out and preaching and the bible says i believe three thousand people gave their lives to christ there are three thousand people waiting on you the bible tells us that peter and john stepped out and there was a man blind or crippled from birth sitting at the beautiful gate but when they received that power that was the first thing they did was to step out and minister healing there is someone sitting at the beautiful gate someone sitting waiting for healing and God is waiting on you today. May you receive that grace, that healing grace, that healing anointing, that boldness for you to step out and be who God has called you to be. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that as I stand here as your servant, you set out of our bellies with flow rivers. I say, let that river on the inside of me just flow and touch. Touch, let the anointing touch. Let the anointing touch every one of your sons and your daughters. Many of you have lost your fire for the Holy Ghost. You have lost your passion for God. There's a fire being released on you right now to give you a new passion for God. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, receive that fire. Receive that fire. At the count of three, one, two, three. Take it. Take that fire. Take that fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let nothing stop you from doing the work of God. 
Amen. Not the trials, not the challenges, not your wife, not your father, not your mother, not your children. God should always be your priority. Father, give us that anointing to put you first, to put you first. And we come against any spirit that is holding your children down, preventing them from progressing, from moving forward and doing your work. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we come against that spirit right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that new boldness and that new grace that you have released on us. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. We bless you. We know that there is no one like you. You are in our midst and we pray that you continue to be in our midst. Let your, let your grace shine on us and may we continue to be the light that you have called us to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you for the work of your hand in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen and Amen. Look to someone next to you and say to them, I'm up and I'm going. I don't know about you. Say to them again, I'm up and I'm going. I don't know about you.